Hi everyone, I'm Zach, uh, co-founder of Kit Medical. Thought it'd be nice just without sharing anything to basically give you a little bit of background about who we are, what we're doing, and then explain why Mayor's Entrepreneur was really important and really cool for us to win, what happened in the program, and then just open it up to you guys for any questions because that'll get the most value from it. So a little bit of background. I've had a severe allergy to nuts. I've lived with a severe allergy to multiple nuts for most of my life. So carrying the adrenaline pens, EpiPens, as you may know them, that's just one of the brands. Uh, that's always been a massive burden for me. Most people don't carry them around. Most people don't know the severity of allergies. There's a serious issue with anaphylaxis in public spaces and you know the PrEP incident that everyone knows about that they've seen recently. And I came up with an idea at university. I studied industrial design at Loughborough. And for my final year major project, we were just given the chance to do whatever we wanted for a year. So I thought, what better than to just tackle something close to my heart and came up with the idea for Kit based off of what defibrillators are and what they do. And the fact they are emergency medication in a public space that anyone can use um, and they are very beneficial to the public. So I came up with this idea at university, worked on it for about a year on my own, then was thankfully joined by my close friend and co-founder, James, who took on the more uh, operational side. I'm much more of the brand product uh, marketing side. Um, and from there, we managed to run a pilot phase with a really basic version of our product that we'd been able to build after raising a friends and family round. And with that, we proved traction in a pilot phase. And literally from that point, it was just build, um, apply to things, see what we can do, all with the aim, obviously, of actually launching a real product at the end of the journey. And Mayor's Entrepreneur was one of those things that honestly, like, just skyrocketed our, well, pers first of all, personally, my experience with public speaking, with explaining the product, with honing in the pitch, um, getting out in front of a network, but also just generally in terms of having the Mayor's Fund for London, the Mayor's Entrepreneur program in our back pocket and saying that on our website and putting that on every postal marketing thing that we sent out to every school, you know, it just it carries a lot of weight um, and there's still people from the program that we speak to today so i'll take i'll show you the kit first of all you'll see one behind me on my wall there oh my camera's flipped that one um got one here and i would say just i'm going to sort of interject mayor's entrepreneur help and just generally kit stuff into this if you have a physical product and you're applying to this bring it to the pitch there is nothing better than being able to show and tell literally you learned it when you're five years old at school show and tell in front of someone when you're pitching it's the most wonderful tangible thing they can they can see that you've made traction you can you know happily hold something and display something for me that works really well in the competition so we give these keys with every kit i actually wore this lanyard around me at the pitch um and then these are just mounted on the wall like a defibrillator put the key in turn it to the left and there you can take it out with you you take it to the emergency and inside there are four adrenaline auto injector pens, two doses, two of each dose, backed up by easy instructions. Um, and what's interesting is we did something quite sneaky. Obviously, the pitch is very short. You don't have a huge amount of time and there is a lot that you want to discuss. So we tactically put Kit on a table next to us. We talked all about it. We didn't show it. But then we basically left it so that the first question someone would ask and the first question the judges did ask was, oh, what's inside the kit? And then that meant that firstly, we had an easy question to answer that we could put other things into. And secondly, we weren't eating up valuable time in our pitch that we used to discuss other things like our pilot phase and our previous funding and our, well, the main point is the problem and explaining the problem. It's, if you sell people on the problem hard enough, your solution becomes a no brainer, full stop. Um, so if you do have something physical and you can do that and you can be tactical with it, do do that. It is a great way to draw attention away from yourself. Give yourself a breather if you are nervous and stressing out, like I'm sure most people are when they're public speaking. Um, and then, yeah, we do have, I'm aware a lot of people, you know, like us, we have a software element as well. And you get the choice. I'm not sure how different the program is this year. If it is any different, but you get the choice to show an image on the screen. We chose not to show anything of the software, just talk about it. Obviously, if you are just a software company and there are important elements to the design and the functionality that you want to get across, do try and show that in the best way you can. But really, it comes down to the problem. And I guess the only thing I haven't talked about really then is I related it to myself strongly. I'm a obviously problem-based personal experience founder. 
there are things which only I will know about the problem. There are things which only I will know about the solution and communicating that the best way to do that is just a story. And if you can make your pitch a story and people just want to know what the end is and they want to buy in, you don't want to chuck information at them and picture them you want them to buy into your story so if you can do that i'd recommend it really really highly but um i don't know i want to sort of open it up to questions i think general advice for pitch day as well mark is fantastic if you had any information from him already he was the one that told me how to walk and talk and dress and act and answer questions and all that stuff is incredibly valuable so from a personal growth perspective, programs like this are amazing for you and you will come out of it a better person, a better entrepreneur, a better founder. Um, and yeah, if, there, if there's any questions, happy to answer anything. Lovely, thank you, Zach. Um, if anyone does have any questions, you are welcome to put them into the chat. We can see the chat and we'll obviously um, pass them over to Zach. Um, the, um, Zach mentioned there about getting some sort of pitching tips from Mark. Um, that is one of the sessions later down the line. So um, if you do stick around with this, then yes, there will be a pitching session for you all. Um, hopefully that will be particularly helpful. While we are waiting for some questions to come in, Zach, do you want to, obviously today our topic has been around, um, you know, asking the customer base and obviously you started with the problem as, as your own problem um, and that's obviously a great way to start. But I know that you spoke to quite a lot of people to sort of, you know, garner the interest, like you say, make sure that this was something that people would purchase. Can you maybe go through a little bit about um, how you found that and what kind of, did any of your assumptions change as you were you going through that experience? Um, yeah, the one, one thing that would stick out to me about this more than anything else is uh, something I, I saw like a really long time ago and then I took into my pilot, which is don't worry, be crappy. Like it's just the most amazing mantra to have. If you are making something really good that you firmly believe in, whatever you are presenting to that user base, whether it is the first, 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 first minimum bubble product, it should be 100 times better than whatever they're dealing with right now. And to you, it's the worst version, but to them, it's fantastic. So you can present something super early, super easy. We did this, you know, I've got a lovely kit and everything we work with now, but the first, <laughs> the first uh, prototype we made fell apart the first time we used it in front of our users. And they didn't care. They literally didn't care. They were like, oh, no, this is great. It still does this and that, whatever. So, yeah, that, that would be my headline. Get there as early as possible. Build the feedback. Make it structured and organized. You know, we use Notion. I don't know if any, anyone here is familiar with it, but building out templates and processes where you can take on feedback, learn from it. We, we basically generated a report at the end of it of all our learnings from um, our pilot phase exclusively was... 10 no seven schools across the uk we put seven of our kits in uh, in those schools and we did it for about four months for free we didn't charge anyone we just touched base with schools did little tests and things and you know they were just happy to be involved so get there early make sure you tell them your problem and people love people so they will get involved and they will do it for free um yeah absolutely great advice um, so we've had a question from Robert. He says, what stage was your business at when you decided to apply to the competition? This is another funny story as well, actually. Um, so we rebranded halfway through the competition. So we were called Anna Allergy Care at the time we applied and Kit Medical by the time we won. And that, <laughs> that process was very funny for uh, everyone involved besides us because at times we thought we were being called the wrong thing. We had new you know, products products being designed and renders being done that were getting design rights and we weren't sure if we could show them or not and it was this whole thing um all i would say is that whatever stage you are at from my experience the mayor's entrepreneur team and dealing with them just you know it is fantastic and um you know they, they will be with you every step of the way if you want to be updating images if you want to be getting support and whatever you can do like they are there to help you and they were there to help us three very uh, tumultuous time, um, but we came out with it. And by the finals, we had a kit, which was awesome. Um, but we only like just scraped by with that. So, yeah. For some context, by the way, uh, Zach, I'd forgotten you were there was ever a point you weren't called Kit Medical, <laughs> right? Because that's a good brand, right? Like, and and it, and they've built it, they've designed it in a brilliant way. It's taken time, and again, you know. If you guys are sitting there thinking your brand looks awful or you haven't done this or you haven't done this like 
no one else really cares. They all forget. It's all irrelevant as long as you keep moving forwards and you get to the next stage. Yeah. And and the same is reflected in anything you put forward as a business, you know, your pitch, uh, you as a person, all of it will get better throughout the competition. Don't worry what the first thing is that, that comes out. You know, our first pitch was terrible and I didn't know it. And <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, do you remember doing your first pitch with, with me and Ed and Laura and the team? Uh, yes, yes. It was actually with just like one of the random interns in those group circles on like the first get together day by London yeah. Bridge or something. And it was, yeah, it was nothing like what we presented really. So, yeah. Love it. Um, Susanna has asked, what was your favorite part, um, about the competition? Well, the winner's dinner and drinks the other week was a lot of fun. So, I mean, I'm just going to chuck that in there on the side. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the... I guess for me and James, it was like my co-founder, it was like our first um, recognition thing that we did. You know, the pilot phase is people that, you know, getting it for free and whatever. But this was the first time we were like up against other people. We had direct comparison and um, you you just really can sort of see where you're differ, see where you're good, see where you're bad, see what you can improve on. Um, everyone there is or at least what we experienced was very friendly and very open to helping and supporting and we're all still connected. And um, then actually we recently did the Santander X award and we were up against one of the other finalists that we competed against in the mayor's entrepreneur award again. And I also had one of the other semi-finalists there who I knew from last time and now we're only better friends. So just the community you get um, and being involved in the whole process is lovely. Yeah, no, definitely. I've, I've heard that quite a bit. I think it is just a, a really nice, encouraging environment, isn't it? Yeah. And having gone through the whole thing now, um, if you look back on it, is there anything that you would have done differently in the competition or anything that you think that you could have done better? No. <laughs> Hon You're honestly, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, one thing I'm really happy we did is myself and my co-founder James split the two minute pitch, one minute, one minute. Um, I think that worked really well and equally so, I think this is a really important point for everyone. Um, when answering questions, we knew exactly who was covering which topics. It's like we had a Venn diagram, like anything finance, operations, com compliance related, he answered anything, business, product, allergy, uh, pilot, I answered. And then it came to the point of you know, there were some of our other competitors that sort of stumbled and talked over each other at the questions. But when we got the question, we just it was like a look between each other and just a, we knew who was answering it. So if you can share this with a co-founder or a team member, do. And if it makes sense to split the questions, align that early on. Yeah, absolutely. Having a clean break and a, and a very clear understanding as to who takes what is is yeah really important for professionalism, for sure. And judges love to see that because they know that you've got people defending each area of the business properly oh yeah Absolutely. if you have one person that answers everything the other person looks like a bloody lemon yeah <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that you may as well have not had them up on stage which again is also absolutely legitimate right you don't i don't need to know how many people are in the business or if there's a co-founder or not i don't care if one is socially inept if they're the best builder of whatever it might be right but uh yeah so all of this comes from practice right um, and then we've got a question from Magdalena. Yeah, yeah, a um, couple of really interesting ones, actually. She's got two. She says, how did you address the administration of prescription medicines to people without a prescription? And also, not everyone is trained in recognising anaphylaxis. So how did you address that? Very informed questions. They are. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. OK, um, someone who is either a medic or has allergies themselves clearly asks those questions. So I'm, I'm going to I'm going to be super blunt. <laughs> Oh, if that makes sense. I'm going to be super, super blunt here, and I probably shouldn't. But at the time we did the competition, we didn't fully know the the regulations. We actually didn't know about the advertising to public and prescription medications. Uh, what I would say is afterwards we got it reviewed and everything, and uh, we, you know it was fine because we're not we're not advertising or selling in this competition. We're essentially pitching for investment in a way. So to us, talking about the adrenaline and where it needs to be and what it needs. To to do was more of a as I said like a story rather than a you need to buy this because then it turns into an advertisement um, and in terms of shaping shaping anaphylaxis and, and allergy in a way that's understandable su such a big thing that you will see startups do again and again and again and again is compare yourself to something else that is out there 
And it didn't matter about anaphylaxis. What mattered is we were like a defibrillator, but for allergies. And everyone can latch on to that. Um, does anaphylaxis and allergy have the same rate of, you know, transgression and attack? No, they're, they're, they're very different issues. But in terms of the actual visual takeaway that someone's going to have, that's where they latched onto. And then other than that, we just expressed some key points that really shape the issue. One around the, you know, the availability of the medication, the other around the social stigma, the other around the deaths. And by then you've got this full 3D picture of the issue rather than just one angle of it. And to Zach's credit, one of the best things that he did that I absolutely love, because again, I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about this problem, uh, gratefully. Uh, so I have no point of reference. I have no idea about scale. I have no idea if it will be a profitable business, right? These are all things I don't know. And when Zach goes, imagine our kit medical with a picture, you know, right next to uh, a first aid kit in every hospital, school, whatever else he named off. And he just went, you know, imagine that. My brain went, oh, mm -hmm. yep, done, easy. I get the entire vision of the business. I get scale. Um, I trust that you'll make it profitable. I don't know you will. I would deep dive on that if I needed to, but I would trust that you will, and I'm ready, mm -hmm. right? So again, and this links into, uh, there's just been a question asked, how much information is too much information? My God, some of the best things you will ever say will be in one sentence or less. Mm -hmm. And all of you need to look to find that. Um, and with that, I'm very conscious it's six o'clock. I'm conscious we could chat with Zach all day and all night, uh, but he has a business to go grow. Uh, so do you all. Zach, do you want to leave us with any uh, concluding remarks? Um, well, just just as a as a point, if anyone wants to message me on LinkedIn or anything, you know, I, I'm literally here. I feel free to drop me a question about kit, about entrepreneurship, about the man's entrepreneur, whatever. I'm here. Um, closing thoughts for this: apply, do it, get in it, learn from yourself. If you don't win, you don't win. You come away with an amazing group of people and increased skill set if you win you get some free money as well and an amazing mentorship team and all the other bits as well so yeah go for it excellent outstanding thank you outstanding. Guys. really appreciate your time thank you guys interesting. thank you right. see ya enjoy your evening pal you too bye right so just in the last couple of um, minutes to conclude, I'm gonna go back to our subset of slides here. And as I mentioned before, I think I've just gone past it. You have the opportunity to book some mentorship. Now, this is something that is going to come into um, the uh, email that you'll get from Dan and the team um, after this session. But like I say, if you have any further questions, connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, you've had Ed's at the beginning of the presentation as well. 